and that is we call for a non-degenerate spectrum okay, a non-degenerate spectrum and this was one of the theorems for symmetric one dimension ha uh, one dimensional hamiltonian the bound states are either odd or even under space inversion okay what does that mean now as you may already notice, the potential that we are dealing with, yes, it is a finite square of potential, but it's also symmetric. It's symmetric about the point x equals to zero, as you can see over here. And this theorem tells us that since the potential is symmetric, and knowing that the potential is encoded inside the Hamiltonian, the Hamiltonian would also be symmetric, right? And since the Hamiltonian is symmetric and is one dimensional, the bound state solutions are either odd or even under space inversion. So under space inversion, the space that we are dealing with is the x dimension. So it's x over here. Now, if I were to just lump all those words into a single uh, box, okay, it would be this. If uh, v applied to minus x is equal to vx, which is exactly the case that we have over here, it implies that psi minus x is equal to plus or minus psi x. Now, this tells us that the function psi is actually um, even or odd. And this would apply to the psi 2. Okay, so we are basically using this and applying it to psi 2. Um, if it's if uh, psi to the psi and taken to minus x is equals to plus psi x, then that's an even function for those of you who who know even all functions. And if psi minus x is equals to minus psi x, that means we can bring out the minus sign. The function is odd. So that means that if I were to write the solutions to this Schrodinger equation uh, as applied to inside the well x between minus a divided by two to a divided by two, these are the solutions that I get. Okay, and notice that I have grouped them into an anti-symmetric solution, which is given by psi kx, which you know is an odd function, as, tell, as given by the theorem over here, or as the theorem tells me, and a symmetric uh, solution, which is psi s, is given by a uh, cosine function. Now this psi and cosine functions, as always, we can multiply by constant, it'll still be a solution to the Schrodinger equation, applies only in the region inside the well. And as you may already see, the solutions that are outside the well, which is basically our e to the e, uh, sorry, e to the k1x and e to the minus k1x, stays the same for, for the anti-symmetric and symmetric solutions, as you can see over here. I got the a multiplied by e to the k1x and the a multiplied to the e k1x, and it stays the same. So this is the same, this is the same. Only difference is the solution to side 2. Now, many of you might be thinking, how did I get this sine function and this cosine function? Well, a simple answer is that yes, firstly, sine and cosine functions are even and odd. Both of them are even and odd as applied to the theorem over there, but not only that, we know that if we were to solve this second order differential equation, we can rearrange the terms. Yes, I understand it's something like that. Okay, so ignore all these solutions for now. I know that if we were to solve the second order showing the equation as applied to inside the well, um, given by this plus k2x, we will get something like the e, uh, a to the i k2x plus b to the e minus i k2x, right? We have something like that. And then I, I can also tell you that, you know, when we would just transform these transcendental numbers to the trigonometry terms and then um, take the magnitude, I will get something like, like a cosine, cosine squared, I think it's a cosine squared k2x plus a sine squared k2x. And then I would obviously have the constant term over here. And I also said that since we are dealing with quantum mechanics, the Hilbert space allows us to use complex numbers. Even though they are complex numbers over here, I can change them back to constants. And that's what I did, exactly. I changed them back to constants given by C over here and given by D over there. And that is basically how I get these solutions. Now, I need to tell you this and you need to take, uh, pay very special attention. And this is perhaps the most important less point of the lesson uh, for today. Okay, a linear combination of the psi a and psi s is not a solution to the problem. It's not a solution to the Schrodinger equation to the problem, okay, which is the finite square potential. Why is that? So I say that alpha uh, psi a plus beta psi s is not a solution, simply because if we were to concentrate on the point that's inside the well, notice that let's just say if, if I use a uh, 4, 4 and 2, okay, 4 for a alpha and 2 for beta. Then I would have the point 4, psi, uh, 4 sine k2x plus 2 cosine k2x. And we can see that this function is neither even or odd. Right? All you need to do is to just put a minus x inside the arguments over here. Now, if I put a minus uh, x inside there, I can bring out the minus x for the sine function. So I'll get a, four, a minus 4 sine k2x and my cosine can absorb the can absorb the minus sign. So it'll be a plus 2 cosine k2x. And we can see that no matter whether I put a positive 
or minus outside the original expression is given by this over here. So this is what we started out with. This is the our four sine to cosine. When I put plus or minus, I will not get back the 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 solution or I will not get back the function when I put a minus x inside. Okay, so a linear combination of the anti-symmetric or the symmetric solutions is not a solution to the problem. It does not satisfy the showing the equation. Oh, sorry, it does not satisfy the theorem that we have um, saying that the bouncy solutions need to be even or odd under space inversion. Okay, so just be very mindful of that. A linear combination when we are dealing with these symmetric one-dimensional Hamiltonians, if I take a linear combination of the solutions, it will not be a solution to the problem itself. So just scrap that idea altogether. As long as there are symmetric potential. So since we have a symmetric potential, we cannot do that at all. Okay? But that doesn't stop us from, from taking multiplying by a constant. Okay, I must uh, tell you that. So that is what we have now. We have the solutions over here, and I guess what we are left with is dealing with these uh, discrete energy values. Okay, now I know that the discrete energy values is not solved anywhere in this problem or, or anywhere in this lesson. This lesson was really writing out the solutions. As you may know, for us to get the discrete energy values, we need to apply the continuity conditions. But in this case, to be more specific with the terms, it's actually called the boundary conditions. Because as you can see, as the particle travels in this case, it's really bounded in the well. So that's why we say the boundary conditions is bounded between the well. If you want to, if you want to deal with the, the potential barrier, it's actually the continuity conditions because they become unbounded as they exit the barrier. So what we're going to do is that we're going to apply the continuity conditions at two points. And x is equal to minus a divided by 2 and x is equal to a divided by 2. And then after that, really, let's see how we get the discrete energy values. Okay? Right. Thanks. Stick on for the next video.